All right, so it's, it's about noon. I think we should just get started. It's a, it's a 30 minute workshop and there's a lot to cover. So I kind of want to dive right into this. I am recording it. So we will, uh, we will be putting this on our YouTube page so that if anybody misses it, they can see it there or you have to leave early. Um, I'm gonna ask you guys to hold your questions until the end. I'll hang out till afterwards uh, for a while and we'll talk if you guys have any questions. My name is Guy Stoyle. I'm the media services specialist in the uh, Library Multimedia Center. Um, over in the side here to the chat, I hope everybody, all of you can see this. Um, I've posted a link to a survey that I would like you to complete after the workshop. Um, I've also put uh, my email in there. I've put a link to the appointment page if you wanted to make an appointment with me if you had any questions or needed some one-on-one -on -one help. Uh, and also the link to the YouTube page. Um, also, as you know, this is, a, this is a workshop for Rush. And the thing that I'd like to, uh, the thing that I'd like to uh, let you guys know also is that um, I looked at the CSUSB webpage earlier today and I put a link over here to where you can get the software. I'm noticing in there that Adobe um, is offering this software, Adobe Creative Cloud, free of charge to students through October 31st, 2020. So it's a great deal to be able to use this stuff for free for basically all, the whole year. Anyway, so let's uh, get started real quick here. Uh, can you send those links again? Uh, they don't appear for people who came later. You bet. Let me see. Let's see. How's that? You got them? Perfect, thank you. Okay. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you guys. You can all see my screen now, right? We already talked about how to get Rush. Uh, we're gonna talk about creating a project folder, uh, starting a Rush project. We're gonna tour the Adobe Rush interface a little bit. Uh, then we're gonna show you how to work with some media aspect, uh, assets. And then finally exporting your final project. So one of the things that I think is important when starting any media project is to create a project folder where you can keep everything nice and neat and organized. Um, over here, you can all see my screen, I hope. If you can't, uh, give me a screen. Um, I've created a project folder for the project I'm going to be using as an example today. Um, this is a project folder for the Great Cycle Challenge 2020. It's a fundraising event that I participated in in 2020, um, raising uh, funds for uh, uh, children's cancer um, research. So it's basically just a folder. And if you click it open, I've divided it down to other folders inside of here. You would wanna do this for any media project that you create because it keeps things nice and neat, neatly organized. And if you need to get something quickly, you know where everything is. Um, you can see these other folders in here, video. And that's, as you guessed, it's where I keep all of the videos. For this example today, I only have four in here. I'm only gonna use one but all the video that we have will go in here. Um, still images, all of the still images will go in this folder and you can see that I've further broken this down further. Um, same thing with audio, I put audio in here. I only have, one, right now I only have one audio file that we'll, I'll be using. And then later, I'm gonna explain this folder right here. This is exports, we'll get into this later. Uh, so I'm gonna close this out and I'm gonna open Rush, so we can kind of look at it a little bit. When you first open Rush, it'll open like this, but for you guys, if you've never used it, though, there will be a, uh, a tutorial that opens with it. And it's super helpful to go through that and it will show you a lot of stuff there too. Um, but I've kind of pushed that aside because I've already done it myself. And we're gonna work on my project, The Great Cycle Challenge 2020. It's a uh, basically a thank you video for all of my sponsors that sponsored me throughout the event. I'm just gonna show you how I kind of got started creating it. We're not gonna cut the whole thing. Obviously that would take longer than the 30 minute workshop, 
but this will give you the basics on how to get started in a media project that you might be doing. So the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is you'll click create a new project over here. Then you'll get to this screen. Down here, you wanna title this. I'm just gonna title this GCC 2020, okay? And then this little gear icon here, if you click this, it'll open up and it'll allow you to check the, uh, select the aspect ratio of the project that you're creating. Um, because I shot everything in 16 by nine, I'll just click this and we'll go here. Some of the still images that I will be working with are not in 16 by nine, but that's okay. You'll see how we handle those in a minute here. Then over here, this is everything that, you know, the different places we can go on our computer to find project uh, files or assets. And here is the project folder that I just showed you on um, the desktop. And again, that project folder can be anywhere on your computer um, or any hard drive that you might attach to your computer. If I click and open this, we see the other folders that are inside the project folder. And I know that I wanna start with my audio first. So I'm gonna click in here and here's my audio and I'm gonna select this. You'll notice a one comes up right there because it's gonna be the first thing that goes or is imported into this project. Then I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna go click the back button. And I know that um, I wanna start this video out with some still images. So I'm gonna go into here and you can see I have these all broken down um, for different parts that I wanna use in this video. I've looked through this uh, footage quite a bit so I know exactly how I wanted to organize this. And this is why it's a good idea to organize all this stuff. If you go into intro images, I'm, I know I'm gonna use um, some of these stills. And I know that the first two images I wanna use are the Great Cycle Challenge and this one, because this kind of starts to tell the story. This is a great intro uh, image because this is what it is, what the video is about. And this is the goal of, of the, uh, the video. And you can see these numbers, one, two, three, um, if I select this, it'll be four, and that'll be the images uh, order that they're imported into this project. But I'm just gonna use these for now. So you'll see what happens when I come down here and I click create. This might take a little minute while it's preparing the media. And then this pops up into the user interface. This is the Rush user interface. It's pretty simple. Um, if you look up here, this right here is the uh, preview monitor. This is where you can see everything that's going on or what you're doing or the things that you're adding to your project. Down here, this is the timeline. And this is where all the magic happens. This is where all the editing happens. And I'm gonna show you how these things work together. So if we go back up here to the project or the preview monitor, and we look at these different things, you'll see these numbers down here, right? These numbers represent where the playhead over here is on the timeline. If I move this playhead, obviously I don't have any images right here in, in this track, but I do have audio here, okay? But this is the playhead is now a minute and four seconds in, okay? I'm gonna move this back down to the beginning of the uh, timeline. This is how long all of this, uh, the actual timeline is right now. This piece of music is about one minute, 49 seconds, roughly, okay? This is a play button, typical like you would see on any uh, tape recorder. Um, and if I hit that, it starts to cycle through the things that I've added to my timeline. I'm gonna pause that. This button here, view exit full screen, does exactly what it says it does, click it and it goes back. This will loop your playback. If you hover the, the cursor above any of these, it'll kind of pop up to what it does. This right here is to change the sequence or aspect ratio. Remember we selected 16 by nine. And then these little two dashes over here adjust the monitor size. And if you click and hold down on this, you'll see that it, it makes it smaller and consequently makes the timeline bigger or smaller. And that's basically how you can adjust things doing that. And sometimes that's helpful and I'll show you why here in a little bit. Like I said down here, this is 
the timeline, this is where all the editing um, magic happens. Um, then you have some little menus down here. If you click this right here and hover over it, it says control tracks. Well, I'm gonna click that and that opens up this section right here. This allows you to control certain aspects of each track. If you don't wanna see uh, the video, you can click this and you can see those gray out right there. I wanna see those though right now, so I unclick it. This will mute anything in this track. And this right here will actually lock anything in the track. So you can't perform anything, any edits in here. So why this is helpful, if you have a track that you don't wanna make any edits to and you wanna protect it from anything, you could lock it out. But we are gonna edit in here and we do wanna hear in here and we wanna see. Then down here, you'll notice there's a slider bar. This slider will allow you to slide through the timeline, okay? And then these handles down here will allow us to expand it. And I like to do that. If I click and I hold that down and pull this down this way, you can see that it stretches out our timeline so we can see this audio waveform better and we can all also see um, our images up here better, okay? Then another thing I like to do is down here, this button is expanding the audio and I like to do that. And you'll see why. I click this and it makes the audio bigger. And I like to do this because in a project like this, I like to cut uh, to the music. Um, it makes it more interesting to be able to see images change with the beat of the music. And you'll see in a minute how we do that. So in order to, well, let's, let's do this. Let's, let's complete the, the, the interface. If we come up here to this plus button and you click it, here we can add a title, we can add more media, and we can do a voiceover. We're gonna be talking about this a little bit later. Um, the title button, you could add a title here, but I think there's a more effective way and I will show you that in a minute here. So I click out of this. Um, this button here will open the project panel. And here you can see the project assets, anything that is, uh, that we're using in our project right now is right here. Um, here's our still that we imported earlier. Here's the other still. Um, here's the music. And here is the sequence. And the sequence is basically just this, everything that you have on your timeline, okay? Um, so I'm going to close this for now by reclicking the button. Then I'm gonna come over here to the right side of the screen and I'm gonna show you what some of these things do. This is titles. Remember I showed you titles over here, but I think this is a more effective way to do titles. If you come over here and you click this button, you'll see that these uh, pre-programmed templates, if you will, for titles will pop up. And as all you have to do is click and drag one of these over and change the text. And I'll show you how to do that in a little bit here. Then we close it again, right? Click it and close it again. Then we come down here. This is effects that we do can uh, use in our project. I'm going to close these. I'm just going to briefly go over these because I'm going to be uh, going over them a little bit more in depth in a few minutes here. Um, this is uh, colors. They have pre-built in um, things here. Then we have this. This is speed ramp. This is. I'll talk about this a little bit because we're not going to be using this so much in our workshop today, but. Um, maybe in a future workshop, this will allow you to speed your clips up or slow them down or create a really cool effect called a speed ramp. We can talk about that more later. Um, this is your audio. You allows you to make basic uh, audio edits. If you click it again, it closes it. And this right here is the crop and rotate. And it allows you to do basic things like create picture in picture or scale things up or down. And I'll show you that in a little bit. So I'm gonna close this and click this to close it. Then I'm gonna come down here. We're gonna start working with our image, images and assembling this project. I'm just gonna kind of move this playhead out of the way. Um, I wanna take and move this uh, still image kind of out of the way because I just wanna work on this one right now. I'm gonna expand this a little bit so that you can see the time or the audio down here a little bit better. But I'm gonna be working with this image right now. And I know that I'm working with this because I have this orange outline around it. If I click this, 
this turns orange and you know that we're working with that. Same thing with the audio. We're working down here with the audio now. It has the orange around it. But I wanna work with this image. And what I wanna do with this image, I want it to play for as long as, if you look down here at the wave uh, form down here, you can see that there is an audio event right here and it kind of falls off here and then it spikes again here. I want this image to play as long as that little audio event right there. So I take the playhead, I drag it down here, and then I'm gonna take, if I click and I hold this down at the end of this still image, and I drag it past that, then I can take the playhead back here and I can park it right, right there where that audio event ends. Now, I can come over here to the scissor icon and I can click this and I can split the clip and it's, it splits it into two different sections, okay? And then if I don't want this part of that still image anymore, I just hit the delete uh, button on the keyboard or you could hit the, the delete over here, the trash can off here to the left hand side and that goes away, okay? The other button that you're noticing um, is the duplicate button. Um, if I'm working with this image right here and I click duplicate, it will do just as it says and duplicate that image. But I didn't want to do that. I could either hit control Z to undo that, which I'm going to do now, or I could hit delete and delete that other image that I duplicated or hit the trash can icon right here. In either case, here, is the still image that I've now cut to this audio um, event. Now, as you can see here, pull this out, there are four different audio events before the music takes a different turn right here. And I wanna do that uh, with these four images. I wanna take, well, I only have two now. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna import the other two in a minute. But I'm gonna take this image. Now, I'm gonna, I wanna work with this one. So I drag it down here and I butt it right against that one, okay? Then I take the playhead, stretch it out. Then I click down here and I hold this, stretch it out. I'm gonna take the playhead, put it back to the end of that audio event or the beginning of this one. And then before I use this and I split the clip. You don't even have to do that. You can click right here, hold it down and just drag it back to the playhead. And it's as simple as that to uh, fit this in here with this audio event. I'm gonna import two more still images so that we can have our intro um, completed. To do that, I come up here and I click the plus button, select media, and it opens up into our intro images folder from our project folder. Um, in this case, I wanna put this one next it says a one will come over it because it's a next, it's the first one I'm going to be importing in this import session. And then I want to put in this next. So it will import it in that order, one and two. And if I click add, it'll put it wherever I have the playhead here. So I just click add and you'll see what I mean. And now they're in there. If I want to close the project uh, window, I just click here. Now I can come back here and start editing these still images. Again, I'm gonna take and I'm gonna move this one up out of the way. I just wanna work with this one. I'm gonna do it just like I did the other two. Uh, stretch this out and I'm gonna come back here right to the beginning of that audio event or over a little bit right there. Click, hold and drag back. Then I wanna work with this one. I drag it down, put it right there. I'm gonna stretch it out. Then I'm gonna come right here to this audio event and I'm gonna click, hold and drag this back. Now you can see I have four images that are going kind of in time with these four separate audio events. I'm gonna play that so you can see what it looks like. You can see how it changes on the audio event. And if you listen, the audio will do something different after this. So something else happens there. And we're gonna put some video in there, but before we do that, I'm gonna show you how to work with these still images a little bit more. Um, if we go back 
and I drag the playhead to this one, I have the orange uh, outline around this still image. So we know that we're working on this one. Sometimes still images can be a little bit boring unless they have some motion to them. Um, if, if you're old enough, you will remember a documentary filmmaker, Ken Burns, and he kind of uh, made this style really familiar where he took still images and he made them uh, move as the story was being told on the screen. And you can kind of do this in Rush. And I'll show you how it's real simple. It's just a button click. If you're here and you go up here to, uh, it's actually in the crop and rotate uh, menu and you click on that. Wait a minute, I lied, it's not there, it's in the effects. So it's in the, it's in the effects menu and you click pan and zoom, you'll see, and I click this again, you'll see how this, if I play it now, you'll see how it kind of moves. Okay, but you notice that you can't really see it real good, right? You can't see that still image. So we do need to pan and zoom this. I'll click on the crop and rotate here. And if you click fit, it will fit the image into the preview monitor. And now when we play it, you'll see it move and you can see all the words. We might wanna do the same thing here, but in this case, the image is smaller so let's blow it up a little bit. And then I'm gonna close this. Then I'm gonna go back to the effects and I'm gonna hit pan and zoom, okay? I'm gonna move the playhead down to this one right here. I'm gonna hit pan and zoom. Do the same thing on this image and hit pan and zoom. Now, if I play them, you'll see. You see they kind of move now. And if you don't like, I don't really like how this one kind of moved because it goes, the word goes out before we hit the next uh, image. So you can click, let me close this here. I click this again. If I click, if I click in the image, I can actually move it around up here. Okay. And I'm going to put it here because I think that that will move better. Yeah, looks a little bit better. You can put it however you want it, okay? Now, remember, like we said, this music changes here. So I think I wanna put some video here. I have to import the video. If I come up to the plus sign and I go to media, it'll default to my intro images that we had before, but we need to go to the video folder from the project folder. So we click back right here. I need to go back again because I'm still in the still images. And now I'll go into my video folder. Uh, these are four mountain bike rides that I took uh, while completing this mountain bike riding challenge. Uh, I'm only gonna use one for the sake of time. I'll use this as one of the rides I did. It's called the Aqueduct or the California Aqueduct. If I select this and I put my playhead right at the end of that still image. I could also use this button up here in the preview monitor, go to previous edit point, and you can see how it, it clicks it right up against there. I've selected this and I click add. That video is now added right next to that still image. And I'm gonna show you how to work with that right now. If you click here, you come out of that, it's easier to edit this video if I move it up to its own separate timeline. And I'm going to do that now. I'm going to work with this video. Um, if I play this video, we're going to see it up here. I'm going to drag the preview monitor down a little bit. This is part of a trail. And I just hit the space bar, by the way. The space bar also pauses your video. If you hit it again, it'll continue. Now, I know this part of the video I want to edit because if you look here, and you go right here, there's some ugly bricks. I don't really like that. I wanna cut that out. So I wanna move the playhead a little bit past this. And I figure there's a good time that I wanna go into this video. So I can click and I can drag this over to the playhead or I could split it using this and then use delete. Let's just do that. 
Now it splits these in two. I don't want this section, so I click it and highlight it, and then I hit delete. Now that section of with the ugly bricks is gone. I can take this video now and come back over here and butt it right up against there. Now, remember I told you this, you can see that the part with the ugly bricks is gone. I wanna stretch this out because I wanna see the timeline down here and I wanna see, you can see how we cut these four still images right here to these audio events. I want this video to play during this audio event right here. And then you can see something else happens here. So all I really have to do is take the playhead, put it right there where that next audio event happens, click, hold this, and stretch it back to the playhead. Now you can see how it all works with the audio events. Okay, but you can also hear my bike. I don't want to hear that. What I want to hear is just the music. So remember I told you you could expand the audio. I'm going to expand the audio and you can see the audio right here for this video clip. But I don't want to hear that. I just want to hear the music. Simplest way to do that is to come up here to your audio um, button, click it and just say mute and you'll see this blue right here turn to gray and now it's edited out. And it's all you hear is the music. Okay. Now, remember I told you that this was the California Aqueduct. You want your viewer to know that. So you're gonna to wanna to put a title here. So I'm gonna come back up here to our title menu, click title. And remember I said this is the, the best way to add titles because they have all these pre-built things right here, okay? And I know that the one that I want to use in particular is the classic web caption. If I click down on this, hold this and drag it over to the video, you can see, I'm going to close this now, close my titles by clicking it again. You can see that we have some titles up here superimposed over this video, but it doesn't say what we want it to say, right? So if you click in there, and you double click this, you can just, it's a simple text editor. I know this is the, or this is the California aqueduct. So now that changes our title, but I don't like, I don't like that font for this. There's one I do like. And then if I go over here, I think that looks better. And again, the way to do that is just to go into the edit of the title menu and you can edit anything, color and font. I wanna close this and now you'll see that this is the California Aqueduct and the title pops up right where we have it and it goes away. You can actually make this longer or move it around anywhere in the video that you want. Let's just leave it there for now. Um, if you look at the video and you say, well, that's kind of interesting. It does look kind of cool, but you want to give it a different look or a different color. Come on up here to the color button, click it. And they have all these uh, built-in presets for you. And if you click on any of these, you'll can see how, you can see how over here, how it changes. Cinematic, film look, different ones. If I pick this one, it gives it a, a black and white look. Um, let's leave that there. And then also, you can also edit these further yourself down here if you want a diff completely different look. So I'm gonna close the color button. We're almost there now. Um, if, if this was your project, you would continue adding footage and images and uh, different assets throughout this timeline in the same way that you would have done this. The only thing I haven't really shown you yet, I mean, there's a lot of things that Rush still does that we don't have time for in a 30 minute workshop. But one of the cool things you can do is add a voiceover. So let's take the playhead, move it to the very beginning, come back up to here to this add media button. And if we click voiceover, it will enable this, uh, 
this track right here for recording a voiceover. So I'll show you what I mean. I just click this and you can see how this turns red. Now, when I click this, wherever the playhead is, it'll give you a three second countdown and then you can start recording your own voiceover. And I'll show you how that works right now. I'll just click it. This is the Great Cycle Challenge USA. So I just click that button again to turn it off. And now you can see your voiceover right here. And one thing I might add that I, I didn't do that I should have done before I did this is silence this because you don't want to hear that music as you're doing the, as you're doing your, your voiceover, the mic will pick up anything in the room. So make sure that you mute any music or anything that you have before you do your voiceover. But then it sounds like this. This is the Great Cycle Challenge USA. The only thing I didn't do that I'd like to do real quick is I might put a, an effect right here called a cross dissolve. And if you go up here to the effects menu and click it, click the cross dissolve, hold it down and you can put it right there and you can see how it looks. It just cross dissolves from one image into the next. After you're done doing editing or editing all of your project together, you're going to want to export it so that your uh, friends or you might want to share, share it on social media. You're going to come up here to the share tab, click it. I'm going to call this, they just want to know what you want to name it. I'm going to call this the GCC 2020. Okay. Where do you want to save it to? Well, if you click here, remember that I said in the beginning, we're going to save everything to our project folder. If you click in here, remember our exports folder, every export that you do save in here, that way everything's self-contained in the project folder. And now that we have that selected and we select the folder is all we have to do is select export. It'll take a minute. It's done. Now we can minimize this. Go look into our project folder under exports. And here it is. Well, I'm going to play this with this. This is your completed video. This is the Great Cycle Challenge USA. And of course, if you had more uh, images and stuff to edit in, you would have done that. And that's basically how to create a video in Rush.